The following is a Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to the Power Cat Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. It's the Power Cat Podcast. And now, let's go to the Spirit Street Studios. Here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast. Basketball season's over in this part of the country, unless you're a Shocker fan. Quote unquote basketball. The NIT is ongoing for the Shockers as they head to New York. We don't care. We're a K State podcast. Tim Fitzgerald. We're out of gates, Zach Carlson, and we're sponsored by The Fridge, and we, I'm being shadowed today. Not by law enforcement, which would be the natural thing you would think would shadow me. The FBI, uh, but Jordan from Sabetha is here with us. We didn't turn his mic on. We can turn his mic on, but uh, I don't trust him. He, yeah, I don't. I, he seems like kind of kid that would just get into your podcast and start cursing. Yes, that is the impression that I've gotten today. He agrees with that, and I like that, that he agrees with it. Jordan's hanging out with us today as we teach him everything not to do in journalism uh, so that he can uh, go become an accountant. Also how to hang signs. Yes, and he wants to hang <laughs> our new glass whiteboard. That's yes. a new concept to me. I went to buy a whiteboard, and I discovered the new thing's glass. It's probably easier to clean. It's much easier to clean. It doesn't stain, but as we found out, it's also very heavy. Yeah. It'll be shattered tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah I'll just fall little, off the I'm a little afraid to come in tomorrow. Look, look, Toby's got. You know, we discovered when we got the box in here, we realized it had been driven over by a four wheeler. What? Like in the warehouse, and it had footprints on it. So we, we, I feel pretty good about its its tempered glass. Well, it makes me feel worse. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know. We got it. Uh, as we continue our build out of our studios, in fact, uh, our construction foreman, Toby, is in our new podcast studio. Yes, we're in a new area here for podcasting, but now we're going to have a dedicated room for it. He's in there working right now. It's pretty dope. It is going to be very dope, and I can't wait to do the video. It's getting closer. We're getting very close here. I promise in this video for weeks. I know. I, well, th- then we got the new area for that, and then I'm like, okay, let's put the podcast in there. And I'm waiting on sound foam, and uh, it's apparently taking them days and days to cut foam. You know, because foam is durable. It's hard to cut, apparently. Just send it to us. We'll cut it. I know. Just send us sheets of it. Come on, man. Anyhow, we are sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Make sure you stop into the fridge. If you're coming for the uh, spring showcase, uh, which hopefully athletics by now knows what it is, honestly, they didn't know what it was. They gave it a name, but they had no idea what they were going to do at the spring showcase. And really what's going on, they have enough guys that have gone through surgery, particularly in the secondary, where they really didn't have enough bodies for a spring game. Plus, Chris Kleiman's not a big fan of the spring game. I like him. I'm, you know, me, I'm not a fan of the spring game. Um, although he'd probably run stuff. He doesn't seem to care if people see their plays. And he's right. Their North Dakota State playbook is pretty well documented. In fact, we've documented it on our website. Uh, so hiding stuff doesn't seem to be a big priority with him. Uh, but they will instead do uh, instructional stuff, fun and games. And, and I don't know, I think maybe uh, letting little Johnny in junior high get out there and play corner against – uh, Hunter Ryzen, it's... How dare you talk about Little Blake Johnny? Lynch. Little Johnny. I'll talk about, about Blake Lynch like that. Yeah, because Blake Lynch, the kicker who claims to be 5'4", but we suspect is 5'2", is actually playing cornerback in practice because they're so short on bodies. Literally short on bodies. That was a, that was a short joke. Sorry. Yeah, I don't really Sorry. appreciate short jokes. Okay. Uh, and this segment sponsored by Tanners. If you haven't been to Tanners for the NCAA tournament, you're missing out. I got in there on Thursday and watched some hoops, and it was fun. Uh, and uh, then, of course, K-State played on Friday, so I didn't do that. But I'll be down there maybe for the Sweet 16. We will see. I've been told I have an event I have to go to on Friday by my social planner. All married men have one of those. Wow. Yeah, I'm not very happy, but... Is that what you call Becky? A social planner? A social planner. Yeah. She she plans things that I have to do that I don't want to do. That seems like some a person that your wife would hire to plan your social events. Well, she wouldn't trust anyone else with that. She's <laughs> too organized for that. But here we go. It is uh, the PowerCat Podcast. We are GoPowerCat.com. And your questions from Wabash Station, our premium message board, are what drives the show. Here you go. Here's Zach. 
Starting us off as Purple My Nurple. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm going to laugh every time I hear that name. In our loss to UC Irvine, were we outplayed or outcoached? Uh, outplayed, honestly. I mean, you can point to... At the end of the day, it was outplayed. At the end of the day, the guys in the court have to get the job done. That's that's the Marcus Watts argument. Yeah, which I don't like. But, but coaches do have a role. That's like saying coaches don't have a role. My point in my column was... I didn't think he used Barry properly. Yeah, and and I think that's kind of where that question's stemming from is the Barry Brown decision, which uh, which I think is kind of over overshadowing everything right now. But when you talk about getting outplayed, they didn't hit what was it, uh, thirteen, eleven shots straight that they missed or whatever over the final uh, six six eighteen six forty six. Yeah, you know, some whatever was, that stretch was. Some there. are bad shots. I mean, some are. In shot selection. So is that the players taking bad shots or they still haven't been properly coached into taking better shots? Certainly not against a zone. They, they're they ill-equipped against zone defenses for whatever reason. As good a coach as Bruce Weber is, he can't solve a zone. It's almost like we saw that coming all year long and we tried to tell people all year long. And even when they thought it was solved, we told them it's probably going to come back to bite them. They, and that's when, what it happened. When they solve it, they shoot well from the outside uh, most not because they just shoot well from the outside, but mostly because they break the zone down and they pass inside out instead of around the perimeter of the zone. Whenever they start passing consistently around a perimeter zone and try to shoot, they miss. It's been pretty constant. And when the passes are coming inside out to the the shooter, it's more of a rhythm, and they, they tend to make those. They did not penetrate that zone. They did not do anything to challenge that zone. And without Dean Wade, that, that kind of showed up. And, well, uh, they just they let Irvine dictate that game instead of the other way around, and and so yeah, is that players or coach? I think it's the whole thing. But at the end of the day, the players have to play. At the end of the day, if Barry Brown's in foul trouble, you got to play. They built a lead without Barry Brown. They lost a lead without Barry Brown, and that all comes down to players. From Titleist Cat, does Bruce not feel the game because he is always so active on the sideline? Uh, the two foul rule is so subjective, as in sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't care for it, but it does not drive me as nuts as not using timeouts to stop runs. He does have a problem with that. Let's just get that out there. He he, he never seems to call timeouts at the right time. I, I, I'm telling you, I, D. Scott and I, of course, were here in our new studio watching on our Beautiful new TV. Better and, view than the NCAA gave yeah. us. And, you know, I'm yelling for timeout. I'm yelling to put Barry in. Um, you know, it's stuff you don't do when you're on press row. All of it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I Even if you have a hard and fast rule about not playing guys with two fouls, you break it on occasion. And he broke it in this game with Cardi Ajada. I say you break it with both of them. But, um, you know... You don't keep the guy in after the second foul. You certainly bring them to the bench, but you could have rotated those two for a big part of that that ending of the first half and probably maintained a lead and gone into half with momentum instead of handing it all to Irvine. Uh, but, yeah, his, his timeout, there's some of that game management stuff that really does bother me about Bruce. I think he's incredible in preparation uh, in terms of scouting reports. He can tell them that they're going to run a zone. He just can't get them to run the right, run a good zone offense. They have to figure this out. This is a glaring Achilles heel of this program is, is that zone offense. It blows my mind that he was willing to break that rule for Cartier but not for Barry. You do it the other way around. Right. You play your best players. It's the NCAA tournament. You, you let your best guys play. And if Barry picks up the third foul – Nobody would have been outraged. Yeah, at Bruce, I, that was the weirdest argument. Everyone would have been mad at me. I'm like, no, no. At that point, you're like Barry. You cannot pick up your third foul, and if you do, hey, you know what? It's only your third foul. You got two more in the second half. See, they would have been mad if it had happened right away. Like, yeah, then they're right. like, hey, right. Bruce, you're. St-. I was okay with him sitting him until it got to like two or three minutes left, and here comes UC Irvine on a charge, and Casey hasn't scored in five minutes, and holy crap, they're about to take the lead or tie it. That's when you put them in, because it's all slipping away right there. I, I just, I didn't agree with it ever, and, and all of his arguments at the end of the day were like, okay, but he finished with two. Uh, here's here's where Bruce really, I think, misses, and this ties into the timeouts, the fouls, and, and how they manage the, the run at the end of the first half. He doesn't, un, he doesn't, for me, seem to grasp the emotion of the game enough that, yeah, Bruce, I understand 
that it was 30 to 30 on the scoreboard at halftime, but they had all the momentum. They're the ones that ran into the locker room excited and you guys dragged off the court like you'd already lost. That is tangible. That is important. And losing that momentum at halftime was huge, far beyond what the scoreboard said. Uh, and, and those are the things that Bruce doesn't always get, uh, but uh, he, he did a marvelous job putting together this team. Folks, I, I know there's talent on this team. I know we've talked about Barry and Dean maybe being in the rafters. I know there's some great players, but they didn't have a lot of depth, and I really thought Bruce Weber to win a championship with this group did an incredible job. He's he's the one who got these seniors to be at the level they are. So as much as you think I always trash Bruce, he, he really did do a good job with this group, and he's got to start over now. From KSU Cat 80, does the rousing success of Coach Weber in this year's NCAA tournament, along with his other four years of one and done, begin to raise any questions about his coaching abilities among the K-State athletic Was administrators? Was that this year's or last year's tournament? I think he might have meant last year. He might have meant last year's, but that's what it was. Okay, read the the end of that question again. I'm sorry. Uh, Does does his other four years of one and done uh, begin to raise any questions in the athletic department? I don't think in the athletic department, no. No. Really, in the athletic department, it's going to come down to uh, ticket sales and big donors. Yeah. And if those things are stable, there's, you know, that's kind of the attitude now. It's a business model. Uh, instead of an emotional model, which is there's something to be said about that. I think Arkansas took the emotional approach and yeah, what the heck fired a coach that had been actually more successful in some ways. He hadn't gone to the lead eight, but or and won some championships, but postseason success. Mike Anderson's done pretty well, if I recall right, at Arkansas, and he got fired. So there's two ways to approach this, and I think athletics with Gene Taylor's simply looking at this financially. Are the donations still coming in? Are the ticket sales still stable? And they weren't stable for a while. And that was really driving it. Uh, I still believe if there hadn't been an AD change in the middle of that, Bruce wouldn't be the coach here because ticket sales were plummeting and donors were unhappy. Uh, but uh, now things are stabilized, and I think Bruce is going to be coached for a long time. It's going to, it's not, at this point after that Elite Eight run, it's going to take losing seasons, uh, primarily in the Big 12. He, he'll he schedule so his team doesn't have a losing record. Yeah. Um, he'll schedule down far enough where he'll make sure his team's winning. Um, but I think that's really what it's going to take. And I don't see that happening. From Solly43, we have two conference titles under Bruce now, but four first round exits. Should we be satisfied? Uh, that's a very delicate word to to be used the word satisfied well some people are satisfied some people aren't satisfied and really that's the hinge the crux of the the dispute with k-state fans right now uh, is this good enough or do you want more and the, the response i got well it could be Willie and Ab- asbury i'm like really that's where you're gonna go that's your standard for k-state basketball because that's not my standard for k-state basketball that was the aberration not the norm for me um and and people don't realize that the moment – this is where I stand. The moment they hired Huggins, the standard changed back to what it was before uh, the the Asbury hire. And and this has been a journey. I Look, I don't – if if John Curry hadn't run off Frank Martin, I don't know where the program is. I don't care what he's done in South Carolina. People, that's a whole different – it's a different place. It's a different – I mean, he's not even the, the second most important – sport at South Carolina. Baseball certainly ahead of basketball, and women's basketball might be ahead of men's basketball in terms of what that department, how they support it. Uh, that that department didn't push for him to get in the NCAA at all. So it's, it's just been crazy. It's crazy. So don't give me that. Uh, Bruce picked up where Frank left off. Bruce didn't pick up where where Bob Huggins picked up. <laughs> Bob Huggins picked up the Jim Woldridge mess and had an NCAA tournament quality team that got screwed out of a spot and certainly would have been in the tournament with the first four. Yeah. The first four existed in Huggins' year. He would have gone to Dayton, and I guarantee he'd won that game, and he might have won the first round of the tournament. Um, Weren't they only a two seed that year? Yeah. I think I think they were a two. What? They were in the NIT. In the NIT. But I still think that they would have been in the tournament. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, I don't care what the NIT is. I think the factoring of TV would have put them in too. Well, I mean, getting a guy like Bob. If you go back, but they didn't get in because the NCAA tournament took Bob Knight and Texas Tech, which K State had swept. Woof. 
and had a better Big 12 record. It didn't make sense. They had a better resume, and they did do that. I'm confident they would have been in the first four. If you had three more teams, is what the first four does, oddly, despite the name. I think K-State would have been in. Uh, anyhow, he, he picked it up and moved it forward. Frank moved it forward. Now, to Bruce Weber's credit, he's moved it forward even further. Um, except for that blip in the middle, eight winning conference seasons followed by three losing, and now he's got it back up to two in a row winning. And so it's it's moving back in the right direction. And next year's huge, but I think I think they have enough talent returning with new talent that, and he's a good enough coach where they're not going to bottom out again at you know five wins. But the word satisfied, I don't like it because like, am I pleased the fact that Bruce Weber has won two Big Twelve championships? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you'd be crazy to not be pleased with that. But it's not like he could lose, you know, have back-to-back losing seasons and suddenly, oh, well, hey, he did win two conference championships, so he gets a little bit of benefit. No. If you're a person that sits up there and goes, well, that's good enough. Uh, Come on, man. Really? How can you just say that's good enough? If you look at KU fans, I think they're unreasonable, but they're not satisfied (laughs) with the success they've had. Yeah. You shouldn't be satisfied. There's no point where you should be satisfied. I bet you Alabama football fans aren't satisfied. They're not. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you need to keep driving forward no matter what your endeavor is, no matter what you're doing, whether it's business, sports, life. You need to keep moving forward. You need to keep improving. And I think Bruce Weber ha- Bruce Weber isn't satisfied. Uh, that, you know, that's that's the upside of him. He, he wants – even higher things. He, it's not like he's happy. Oh, we lost in the tournament, but we had a good season. I know it eats at him. And he said that LaSalle loss is one of the most painful losses he's had as a coach. And I think that's a good indication of where he's at. This isn't good enough for Bruce Weber. It's not good enough for me. And I'd like to see them make progress on that. But I also have realistic expectations for next season as long as they don't bottom out again. From who for KSU, do you think K-State underachieved, overachieved, or finished about right this basketball season? Well, they underachieved. <laughs> they overachieved with the conference title, and then they underachieved at the end. I, I kind of think they balanced it out, but you're always graded by your last test score. Y- yeah, that's the thing, man. This team, last year's, no, hold on, this year's team was better than last year's team. But last year's team went to the Elite Eight. Their test scores were better at the end. And this team lost in the round of 64. So it just depends on how you're marking success. Are you marking it by the regular season or are you marking it uh, by the NCAA tournament? I think you need to mark it by the NCAA tournament, although you cannot discount winning a Big 12 title and ending KU streak. That is notable. In 10 years, think of it this way. What season will you remember more? The Big 12 championship season or the Elite Eight season? Because I really think it's the Elite Eight season. I think that's a lot more fun for fans because the Big 12 Championship is an 18-game grind that, you know, it doesn't all happen one or two weeks. It happens throughout the course of two months, three months, however you want to look at it. And and it's not all special at once, but in the Elite Eight, it's it's boom, boom. Creighton, UMBC. Oh, man, that was great. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Next week. Oh, Kentucky. Well, what are we doing in two days? You know, it's it's all happening at once, and it's a lot of emotions all at once. And that's why I think people are going to remember the Elite Eight season more is because it meant more in the end. The Big 12 championship was nice. Obviously, you're never going to take that away from them. But the, the 2013 team won the Big 12 championship, and no, the only reason that gets brought up anymore half the time is – they lost to the Sal, so I, I think that they they definitely were an underachieving team. They met the mark in terms of the Big Twelve. I mean, they were picked second. To say that they overachieved when they were picked second, I think, isn't entirely accurate because that's right. That's right where they were supposed to be. And honestly, I think we all kind of expected them to be in the mix or at least win it. So I would say they they achieved what they were supposed to in the regular season, and then when it came to the postseason, they flopped. They should have been playing for the Big 12 Tournament Championship. They flopped against Iowa State. They should have probably been playing in Louisville, what, tomorrow? Is that a Thursday yep, site? tomorrow. They should be playing tomorrow, and they're not, so they underachieved there. So the postseason was very, very dissatisfying. Um, you're, you're not happy with it at all, and the regular season is kind of what you expected. That's where I'm at. So basically, uh, if you look at my wife Becky, the wedding went nice. Uh, but the postseason has been very disappointing. God dang it. Sure, we'll go with wow. that. 
from Purple MKX. Any early thoughts on who might be leaving the men's basketball team, if any? I hate doing this. I really do. I don't, because it kind of sounds like, well, get out of here. Right. I, but uh, th- obviously people are. Read right between the lines. Maybe they don't know it yet, but obviously someone's leaving. Yeah. Uh, Xavier's not going to go pro. Let's put that out there. Xavier's going to. Xavier will put his name in for the draft to find out where he stands, and he'll yeah. end up coming back because that's what the N- NBA will tell him. You have potential at this level. Go work on this and this. Yeah. Ball handling, defense, and outside shooting. All of it needs to be polished. Which, side note, is why I don't see the point in entering the NBA draft early if you know you're not going to go. If we can sit here and say Xavier Sneed needs to become a better shooter from the outside, more consistent in mid range, he needs to be able to dribble the ball. But like, if we can point the he those things an, out, he has an opportunity to go in front of his future employers and hear from them what they want from him. Yeah, but a coach, a college coach, can do that. But at the end of the day, Zach's exactly right. I don't get guys like Kamal Stokes doing it. But Cam, I hate to tell you this, you're not an NBA guy. You're, you're just not. You're not fast enough. You're not tall enough. You don't have enough dynamic principles to your game. You're not an NBA guy. And and I'm, I bet you Bruce Weber doesn't tell him that, but that's the, the truth. Barry Brown probably isn't an NBA guy. He definitely wasn't last if year. If Jacob Pullen isn't, who was a better, more true point guard, then Barry isn't either. But Barry's going to make a like Barry's Jake, three but, inches taller. So. Yeah. Uh, is he? He's listed three exactly. Inches I don't know. He might be taller, but I know this. Cardi's yachting at six four. <laughs> no, no. I mean, come on, man. Really? Come on. Uh, maybe if on a windy day, his dreadlocks get him to six four. I don't know how they come up with that. Puts it in that little messy bun or whatever at the top. Gets him up there. <laughs> messy bun. Uh, he's gonna do it. It's good. It's fine. He's coming back. If he goes out, he's crazy. But all he needs to do is look at Wesley Wandu. Here's a guy that's very limited offensively who generates good, positive things out of his athleticism and his commitment to defense. Wes decided he was going to be a lockdown defender. And because of his length, became a really good lockdown defender and is now taking that to the league. And that's really his role. Even though he's in the starting lineup, he, he scores like a bench guy. But he, he goes in there and he can rebound for his position and he can defend the daylights out of people. If Xavier embraces the Barry Brown idea that I am going to be a lockdown defender and become the guy that's going to shut down their two, three, or maybe four, like Wesley Awandu was able to do, Xavier Sneed's stock in the NBA will go way through the roof. Second round pick still, but way through the roof. And, and until he becomes a really dynamic scorer, which I think he can, I think he's got that instinct to do it. He just needs to work on that shot a little more and clean up his mechanics. Uh, then he can be a first round guy. And then, as far as the other guys, it'd be really easy for us to sit here and list four guys probably that we could see going. I also think it's very easy for everybody listening to this podcast to do that. Go look at the stats, go look at who plays and is a junior, sophomore, see that they haven't yeah. really developed in the three years that they've been here. I think you can make your educated guess. The the biggest thing holding back Bruce Weber's program from consistent um, success, you know, they shouldn't have to dip every four years you know, or every three years. It, it's the middle recruiting. This team, this team should have had a better bench. It just has too many empty recruits sitting on that bench. Guys that... <sighs> I don't know how they thought they were going to play at this level. I understand taking some chances on a big man here, but if they don't have good feet and they can't run, what you think they're going to miraculously get that? Uh, no, I, I'd rather take a, a tall, skinny guy who has good feet and can run and then get him in the weight room. That's more tangible to me. I, I haven't understood some of their selections and recruiting. And if, even if you go back and look at – we talk about the Wade Brown-Stokes class and how important it was – to K-State basketball. But there was like seven guys in that class. Eight guys? Seven guys? I mean, it was a huge class. And a majority of them aren't in the program. That's where the problem's at. It's not that uh, you're not hitting enough home runs. And honestly, they don't, haven't hit enough. Xavier Sneed and Cardi Giotto, getting one guy a year that are legitimately Big 12 players, that's not good enough. 
you got to be putting up more numbers than that in your recruiting tail to go out and get, uh, you know, at least three guys every two years, if not two guys every year if you've got decent-sized recruiting class. I can play at this level. Mike McGirl's a role guy. He's not – to me, he's not a frontline Big 12 player. Never will be. Doesn't have all of the tools you need to play at this level. And that's where their recruiting has to improve. They, they're going to go get stars. They're going to go get guys – um, and they're going to see guys that they can, they know they can develop. That's one of the things Bruce Weber is really good at. I, I can see Barry Brown, and I can see what he can become, and maybe Barry even exceeded that. But, but he goes in too often and thinks he can work miracles. The day they told me Javon Thomas was an elite <laughs> point guard is the day I'll never forget that I, there's a coach on the staff that I can't, I think doesn't evaluate talent very well. The kid, kid's a point guard who can't shoot free throws. I, has no offensive ability. How did you ever think he was going to be an elite point guard? What is he, Doug Gottlieb? That guy couldn't shoot free throws either, and he got around it, but that's that's a rarity. So, you yeah, know, moving on. From Thundercat, what is your next year's starting five for the basketball team and why? Right what against. is your eight-man rotation? Where do you oh, see us boy, finishing? Kept going. Ooh. Yeah, it got difficult there. Eight-man rotation, man. <laughs> That's tough because of what we just talked about. We don't know who's leaving the team um, and who's coming in. The five-man, uh, or I think, let's see, I think Cardi will be the one. I think Dejuan will be the two. Once I figure out how to pronounce his name, actually. Dejuan, Dojuan. Dijon, I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. So I think those will be the two guards. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think Xavier will play the three spot. I think McCall will play the five, and they might just start Austin Trice at the four. The only other scenario that I see is them putting Xavier at the four. Uh, you could put Mike. You could maybe find a Mike spot for Mike in the starting five and go really, really small. Um, or if they add a Juco guy along somewhere that kind of can play the in-between spot. I, I love it. Mike McGurl. He's a great kid. I want, I want him on my team. I don't want him in my starting lineup. If he's in your starting lineup, you're deficient. He's a guy that can come in off the bench and play the one, two, or the three when you go small. But he can't be in your starting lineup. You have to be better than that on your front line. I agree. Um, so, I mean, that, that, that's kind of my initial thought on it. But again, like I just said, a lot of it depends on who they're picking up here because they're going to add something. You know, are they going to pick up a grad transfer, a JUCO transfer, uh, a 2019 recruit? I mean, I don't know what they're going to do just yet. And that's very uh, reflective of kind of how I want to answer the question because I think if they went out and found a guy that could maybe slide into that three spot, then you can put Xavier at the four and, and go small, which actually works for this team at times. Um, but I think – Three of those spots are set in for sure. Um, as long as De- as long as De- just Gordon, yeah, Gordon. We'll just go Gordon. Well, there's two Gordons. I, yeah, Antonio Gordon's not going to start. <laughs> but yeah, it's, just for clarity, yeah. Maybe we just call him A Gordon. Yeah, A Gordon and D Gordon. So I, I think he'll start as long as he doesn't come in and you know just kind of flop in terms of his summer development but I, I think that three or four of those spots are, are shored up and we'll just kind of have to wait and see on the fifth from Canelio in my opinion I see Gordon pushing one of our guards out of a starting spot next season I think this kid is damn good am I delusional and do you see that as a possibility who's that from from Canelio. Canelio, did you use the word damn on our podcast yes because that's the worst thing we've ever said on the podcast no. <laughs> Riley didn't censor it. Sorry, I wasn't well, I'm, really paying I'm attention. I'm damn upset about this. This might go down as Bruce Weber's best get that is A, ranked high, and B, develops. You know, you can point to Marcus Foster. Yeah, he was a great get, but was Marcus Foster was not supposed to be what he, he was. He was a great find yeah. that uh, they lost track of the psychology of the player. I, the, at right. the end of the day, it's the kid's fault, but also I really don't think the coaches – handled that properly. Barry Brown is one of the greatest players in program history, but he wasn't supposed to be this at all. It's kind of a miracle that they took a chance on him. But this isn't the first four-star that's run through the Mobile program. Right. I think he's going to develop, though. He's not Malik Harris. Malik Harris was supposed to be all that. Malik Harris was supposed to be a stud. (laughs) That was a flop. But no, I, I do think that 
I think this kid is is going to be special just watching him play. Hell, he'd be Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois if it wasn't for EJ Liddell uh, over at, at across this city, state, whatever. That dude is a stud. He's going to Ohio State. So if it weren't for him, I think that, that he would be Mr. Basketball in the state. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he'll develop, and I, I think he'll go down as one of Bruce's greatest recruits to, uh, in a time at K-State. Last question of the first half from KSU Cat 80. K-Man seems to be pumping some sunshine talking about next year's men's basketball team. What are your realistic expectations about them for next basketball season? Um, I don't think they do any favors by doing that. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't listen, so I'm not sure what they're saying. But <clears throat> I think realistically, uh, this team finishing in the middle of the Big 12 and sneaking into the NCAA tournament is – as a realistic expectation, being on the bubble. And in a rebuilding year, being on the bubble at Kansas State, I can see that where they're, where the program's at right now. It's not where I want it to be. But right now, I think that's realistic. Um, but challenging for the top of the conference, being anything like this team, I don't think that's just being overly optimistic. I think it's insulting to Barry Brown, Dean Wade, and Kamal Stokes and, and what they've meant to this program and how um, – you know, and let me stop and say this. It really wasn't just about them being good players. They're great kids. They're great leaders. They're committed to the cause. You can't say that about other previous recruits. You can't. They were in it for themselves or they weren't fully committed. They didn't work as hard as you needed them to work. Uh, and certainly they weren't quality individuals. And, and really, at the end of the day, they've got to go make sure they're getting guys that fit into the locker room and the campus. And they... They found good players that do that in those three. Um, I, until you put all the ingredients in the soup, you don't know what it's going to taste like. And just declaring that it's going to be great is a little bit dangerous. Uh, uh, but I also think it's not going to be awful. Let's just, let's just say it's going to be a three-star restaurant. Yeah, I'd eat at a three-star restaurant. We do all the time. But here's the problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> here's the thing is like, I think that the overly optimistic side of it at times comes from guys like Cartier, who, let's be real, he thrived in his role this year, A, because he's a great player and he has the talent, but B, he, it's not like he was the guy, you know? There were so many other guys that teams had to prep for, and then they didn't necessarily know, or, you know, they, they might not have been prepared for Cartier, or Cartier came off the bench at times and caught the other team's second guys on the floor. So it kind of worked out. He has to make that transition into role player to the guy. And that's the same thing with a guy like Xavier, you know? Okay, yeah, you stop Dean Wade and Barry Brown, that's fine, but who are you gonna who who's gonna stop Xavier? So I think that people like that have have flourished at times as a benefit of that. And I'm not saying that they can't step up into those roles. They absolutely can. But I, I think some people are thinking that they're there yet already. And the excitement of this year and what they did at times has kind of played into that. And and I think that it's going to be, like like Fitz said, they're going to be a good team. I expect them to be in the CAA tournament. That's why on the message boards all the time, I'm posting, like, I expect them to be there. That's my, that's where my bar is. Like we said last year when we went on that – or when you went on that little rant, 9-9 nine nine in the podcast, go win a game in Kansas City, go win a game in the NCAA tournament. That's not too much to I, ask. That's not too much that's, to ask. If, that's, if that bar is too high, then we've got really different expectations for basketball at Kansas State. Be average in the Big 12. Be average in the Big 12 or better. And they've done that now two years in a row. Go, go win a game in Kansas City. Done it. Go – Go win a game in the NCAA tournament. Done it, didn't do it. Um, you should be able to, if, if you're an average team in the Big 12, you're going to be a nine seed or above. You're going to be playing like or inferior competition. Don't give me this crap that Irvine was underseeded. Maybe they should have been a 12 or a 13. <laughs> it's not like they should have been a nine. K-State made them look like a nine because they didn't manage the game well coaching and playing. They were pretty much properly seeded. Oregon probably shouldn't have been a 12, but they earned that through their resume through the year when they had all the injuries, but now they're playing like a five. Go be Oklahoma this year, man. Oklahoma sucked in conference play. They were under 500, they and they game. made the NCAA tournament, and they beat Ole Miss, and they, well, I wouldn't say that they almost beat. They gave Virginia a little bit of competition for a mm -hmm. while. 
That's not a hard bar to achieve. You want to know why Oklahoma's in the NCAA tournament, though? Because they scheduled. If you schedule out of conference and you play all right, you can kind of afford to suck in Big 12 play. They valued those games. Exactly. They valued going to Wichita and winning. I don't think Bruce Weber puts enough value on, hey, we're going to go to Tulsa. They're going to play his own. Uh, they, they have looked ill-prepared for Tulsa two years in a row. If they do it three years in a row, it, it's play really – Tulsa next year? I think that Tulsa comes to Manhattan. Yep. But, oh, oh, God. It was a three-game – that's a, that's the best contract. Get one neutral site game, one game in your place, one game in in our place, and call that good. That's a good way to schedule. Um, they they really weren't mentally checked into A&M. That was just like an extra game. But that game hurt them in seeding. You want to complain Irvine was overseeded? Well, if you go win at A&M in Tulsa, you're a three seed. You're seeing a 14 seed, and you're playing playing a two seed later on in the tournament. Not even push for a two. Exactly. So you got to take care of your business instead of worrying about other people's business. And I think we're seeing the program move in that direction. Now, if they can take that next step, that's the big one. And uh, I don't, I'm not saying Elite Eight every year. That's just silly. But you certainly, four out of five years, shouldn't be losing in the round of 64. That's just, that's intolerable. Cal Irvine has won uh, as many first round games in the last seven years as Bruce Weber's program. Think about it. Kind of sticks with you. That's the first half of the Power Cat podcast. Jordan has not fallen asleep. His shadowing experience is troubling. Uh, he will go back to his high school counselor and need to unwind from this experience. But he is still like, you doing okay with that? Uh, he said off my can. Yeah, he's, he's okay. We'll be back. Get into the bridge. Get into Tanner's. Go into Tanner's. Uh, don't buy me shots. Just don't do it. This is not a good idea. The Power Cat Podcast continues shortly. I'm trying to get a group text in on what everybody wants on the liquor store run, but my phone keeps auto-correcting liquor store to the fridge. A fridge or the fridge? The fridge. It just did it again. Well, the fridge is more than just a liquor store. The fridge has over 3,000 wines in stock, the area's largest selection of spirits and craft beers, plus their back-to-back winners of Beverage Dynamics Retailer of the Year. Oh, I get it. Wow. Smartphone. Autocorrect your next liquor store visit to the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, 1150 Westport in Manhattan, online at fridgeliquor.com. For more than 20 years, there's only been one reliable source for exclusive and unmatched premium K-State sports news content. It's GoPowerCat.com. The tradition continues as Tim Fitzgerald, D. Scott Fritchin, and the other GoPowerCat sports experts continue their relentless coverage of K-State sports. So make sure you're subscribing to the one and only GoPowerCat. Hey, K-State fans, it's time to come home to GoPowerCat.com. We now return to the Power Camp Podcast. Welcome back to the Power Camp Podcast. Here from our new studios. That will have a name. Well, they have a name. We just haven't announced it. We're going to make a public announcement. It's a big deal. Hey, guys, this is a this is a little internal thing. So I talked to them today about having a reception. Because they're fired up. They want to like show off their Like studios. an open house? Yeah, basically. So we have to clean. You have to provide the fragrance. I think they'll do that. I mean, we need to clean the office anyways. Yeah, I and mean, I've got to organize my office. Can we have a non-sponsor barbecue place cater it? Uh-huh. Well, considering we don't have any barbecue sponsors. No, I, I said, they are not a sponsor. They they have been in the past. Yeah. So. We sponsor them. We're very supportive of, We're very of, supportive their, of, 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 their, of their business. Their business. They're good friends. So, yeah. Well, but that'll be up to uh, the company that will not be named because I think it'll actually be their reception, but in our Uh offices because uh, they're trying to create business in this area and other areas of town. So we don't need to clean our office. No, we do. We do. People will be walking all around. Oh, you said in, okay. I, I heard you say, I thought, I I thought you said in their offices, not ours. I'm, it's like dyslexia, except brain. You hear it wrong. Is that a thing? It's called being Riley Gates. And this segment is sponsored by the Fridge and the Low High. Did you hear that right? 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the High Low, which is down in Aggieville, pizza, burgers, drinks, debauchery, all things I enjoy. So get down to the High Low, another good place to go watch the tournament. Great staff, great people, oh, amazing food. We're doing lunch there. We're going to take Shadow. We're going to take Shadow to lunch there. You're going to go watch us eat. I'm trying to lose weight, man. So uh, only on only two slices weight. of mac and cheese pizza? I put on some postseason weight. <laughs> It was because you guys had an extended guide date in San Jose. We did in and out Burger twice. We almost did it a third time. I kind of wish we did do it a I third did. I time. I wish we had. Yeah. What did we eat for lunch today? Mod pizza. It was, oh, okay. it was good. It was okay. It was like a pie five, except hmm. not. Not pie five. Hmm. Okay, good for you. I'm glad you guys had some happy time together. So basically, the case they lost, you got stranded out there because the airlines are so wonderful now. Yeah, you can come back earlier. You need to cancel your ticket. Okay, but that's because we're on basic economy. Like, uh, but yeah. that's the only thing you can buy at that point that's not outrageously priced. Right. right. Doing anything other than basic economy was like eight, nine, a thousand dollars a leg. They've gone nuts with their pricing structure. Yeah. So we got a different hotel, and just hung out. which, by the way. Of all the double trees I've stayed in, that one. It really? Yeah. It wasn't very good. It was good. like the it, pictures look great. That's you why walk I, in the lobby and you're was like, the lobby was fine. Fitness center, fine. Rooms, nineteen eighties. Felt like I was staying at my grandma's house. Oh, you I must have we got were, it. They they had I saw updated rooms, so that you must have gotten they must be updating. But double trees are all kind of trash now. It's like where they're putting their Hiltons that are aging, where they buy something else delicious for, cookie for example the mm. former holiday inn in manhattan is now at four points by sheridan and lawrence the exact same property is a double tree <laughs> that's that's the that would that isn't salina a ramada i don't know uh, Ramat- yeah you might be right i've stayed there and it was bad oh by the way oh, boy, tsa threw away all my golden gram bars <laughs> what yeah <laughs> I had uh, you, you ever seen those like s'mores golden graham bars, kind of like a cereal. I yeah. had, I bought a box of them for like breakfast or snacks or whatever. The whole time we were there, obviously we took our early return home, so I had like nine of them left over. I stuffed them in my check bag. I got home and I'm emptying them, emptying my bag and it's not there. And I'm like, I kind of like forgot about it. And I'm like, okay, well maybe it's somewhere else. I checked everything; they were not there. I had at least nine or ten of those bars left, and they are gone. Took them. I'll have to check my. I don't remember if I got my. And I can't remember bars. if I brought my cologne or not, but it's not there either. Thanks, you, TSA. Man, you smell like crap the whole time, probably. I got a new. Bar. You could be like our friend Tom Martin, who was mad that his hotel lost a couple of suit pants, and they got home and then they were on his bed. He never <laughs> took them. Good job, Tom. Hello, Tom. Good job. Here we go. Questions from Wild Bass Station. The second half of the Paracat Podcast, sponsored by The Fridge and The High Low. Mm. The well, football. Oh, football. What's that? From KSU 80, oh, excuse me, KSU Cat 80. Uh, after having so much more access to coaches and players this winter and early spring, what are your early expectations for K State football this fall? National Championship, Super Bowl victory. That's what it feels like. <laughs> so they're going to win the Super Bowl. Um, you don't know, uh, you know, you don't know, but the energy is amazing. Uh, football's fun again for these guys, but it's not about being fun. It's not about having a bunch of social media videos. It's not about being gregarious and outgoing on Twitter. It's about winning football games. And so I don't know. But they're, it, they're, I mean, guys, as of that practice we saw on Monday, it was practice five of 50. <laughs> We're just so early in this process. He's five practices in as Kansas State's football coach, and we all want to know, are they going to have a winning season? We don't know. They have no idea. They're still evaluating what exactly they have and how bad is this running back situation and how bad is the defensive back situation. We don't know because they don't know because they have so many guys injured and had offseason surgeries. So it's it's a work in progress. I might have a better idea in the fall, and I certainly will have a better idea after they go to Mississippi State. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's all about – it's not about it. the fun. It's it's about winning. But at the same time, I do think that the fun is is going to be reflective in some games. I agree. I, agree. I, I mean, these are kids that are going to want to play harder. They're going to want to play for these coaches more because they feel like they're actually a part of it. You know, they feel like this is theirs again. And I, I think that that is – you're not going to be able to see that result. I mean, that's, there's no way to measure that. But I, I do think that it's going to – 
pay off in the long run. Like Marcus Watts told me or yesterday, I guess it was, he had fun the first spring practice with Prince. It was different. They did make it more fun. And then eventually he realized our coach is an asshat. You know, and the guy's a psychopath, and he's making his assistant coaches run. He's demeaning people at all times, and he's playing my wee-wee's bigger than your wee-wee with everyone that he can, which was uh, Ron Prince's downfall. I actually saw someone making a comparison between Chris Kleiman and Ron Prince. It is Ron Prince didn't fail because he had open practices and more media opportunities and, and went to Catbacker's events and said all the right things. That's not why he lost. He lost because he was a horrible human being. He didn't even lose because he was a bad coach. He's actually a very knowledgeable football coach, but when you treat people like dogs and not just your players, your assistant coaches, why did so many guys leave? Because he treated them like dogs. He was he identified great talent. I mean, the head coach at Penn State, offensive coordinator, former head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator at at Penn State was a you know, basically a grad assistant, a young coach on the on that Prince staff. He he had great coaches, and but he treated them like crap. They left, the players left, the donors dried up, and he got fired because he was an average coach. If you're going to be an average coach, you better be like Chris Kleiman and be really good, and people like you. You can't be a jerk and be average. That's good life advice. Jordan, write that down. You can't be <laughs> a jerk and be average. He's write it you can down. only be a jerk. <laughs> If you're really good. He is literally writing this down. They're going to be like, hey, what notes did you take? <laughs> that, that, this is a good shadowing experience. If you're going to be an a-hole, which I'm uh, – do I need to explain what that means? No. Okay, he's good. He's good. Uh, then uh, you better be really, really good at your job. Right? Right? Because if you're an a-hole and you're average, you're going to be an unemployed a-hole that uh, doesn't have a job because nobody wants Taking to hire you because notes. you're an a-hole. There we go. Sorry, Do you I have can't. to submit this assignment? <laughs> to, okay. <laughs> you have received that. They'd be like, we're never going back there ever again. <laughs> oh, there you go. Develop. So uh, you're going to get back. You're going to fill out the form, turn it in. I got to turn something in for you. And they're going to go, I need to do this again. Go go to your dad's bank in shadow. <laughs> we're not accepting this. It's, you Hold on. You went to a bar and ate food? That's part of your shadow experience? Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> From Adam K sixty three, in watching some of the spring practices, is this the most football you've watched in the spring? I found myself. You weren't there. No, These we guys were coming go. back. We were in the air. I'm yeah, so they, sad. They were still traveling back. Uh, I would like to publicly state my love and affection for D. Scott Fritchie because he went to an open practice. We had no interview availability. You know, Ron Prince would come over and go, "Hey, fellas, I know the team's practicing behind me, but let's talk." I'm a phony son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> but uh, we had none of that. So D. Scott goes, I got a story out of it. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. A thousand words. I'm like, how? How did you get a thousand words out of observations? But he did. And it was really good. Uh, part of our new uh, series of stories from him called The Big Picture, because that's what he writes about. Um, and I stood there and went, I'm at a football practice. For 30 minutes, I'm literally like, hey, I'm watching them practice. This is, I can't believe I'm at, I'm watching them practice. Then, I mean, the tight ends are right next to me, and I'm watching the tight ends do drills, and they were really basic drills. We did not see much. Uh, they did some running. and It's I like mean, when they let us go to basketball practice. Yeah. They do I, the three-man weave. I mean, the linemen are firing off the ball with the, the little shade thing they lower so yeah. you come off low. And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of equipment to buy for that. Couldn't you put like – We just had a metal bar in high school. That's exactly right. Couldn't you – just have the bar or, you know, and then you can have a, what's the game where you have to go under the bar drinking game? What? Limbo? What? Limbo? Limbo. Yeah. You could have limbo. Not, not a bar like that. I, I was that like a, a cage. Drink. What kind of drinking games do you play? <laughs> That's a beach drinking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, of course, I can't limbo. I feel like I fall down. alcohol both. consumption is not necessary or no, required, but it typically is probably typically actually discouraged in limbo. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I don't know. Anyhow, the they weren't doing wins. much. Anyhow, I was right next to tight ends, and did I notice that Sammy Wheeler was at tight end? No, because I was sitting there the whole time. Oh, I'm at practice. I'm at practice. Also, <laughs> I'm at practice. And then I was also the last five minutes. I'm like, I'm at practice, and I have to go up the stairs. Oh crap! They don't let you take the elevator. They, they, they would have. Yeah. It's also not like Sammy Wheeler was – it's not like he sticks out of the crowd. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, not – some of the guys had uh, – I can't – if they were green jerseys. 
uh, quarterbacks. quarterbacks. Green. <laughs> well, then they had red jerseys. They uh, some of the tight ends had non-contact jerseys all over so covered Probably the Nick names. Probably Nick Leonard's. <laughs> Nick wasn't in even doing that. He's still shut down. I can't wait till the next. We get another one, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I actually get to go. I probably won't be there. Okay. Because I proved that I'm completely worthless at the practice. Like, seriously, I, folks, you are better off having D. Scott Fritch and tell you what happened at this practice than walking up to me and say, what happened at the practice? I'll just hand you a copy of D's story because I was useless. I was like, I'm at practice. I watched the quarterbacks a little bit, you know. They had different colored jerseys. They were easy to find. I don't know what color they were, obviously, from this discussion. But yeah, so it's cool. Everything going on isn't just cool for the fans. Uh, it offers us a chance to engage with our subscribers, who are all K State fans, in a different way and provide them much more uh, information. Zach's getting more videos. Riley's able to write more stories. D. Scott's getting more information, more texture to his stories because he's able to talk to assistant coaches and coordinators. It's just better for the fan experience. And and we're part of that in the being the conduit between the program and the fans. Uh, and not, not the, you know, K-State social media and K-State Corbin McGuire does a remarkable job, but that's that's the corporate stuff. You know, they don't want you to see and everything. They're not going to give you the analysis. We're willing to tell you bad things. Let's put it that way. And that's, you know, uh, some media may not be able to, but we're willing to uh, tell you uh, this is what's wrong and what we're wrong. And we're, we're, not, we're not here to function as fans. That's not, that's not our job at all. From MBCAT, do you appreciate having access to the coaches during the football season? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, but, well, Moving on. Uh, no. Courtney Messingham sat down and, and said hello, and I responded, assistant coaches can talk. I was kind of joking with Zach, like, actually, because we sat down, and he's like, how are you guys doing? And I'm like, I was a little bit caught off guard because coaches don't usually talk to us like that. But on a serious note, I mean, it is really nice because, like, Chris Kleiman is a very intelligent guy, obviously. And I think he knows his his roster, his positions, uh, left left and right, up and down. But also it's nice to get thoughts from the actual position coaches, from the guys that are actually going to be managing the – you know. It's not it's not quotes saying like, oh, this is what Courtney's going to do. It's Courtney saying, this mm-hmm. is kind of what I'm thinking. This is what I'm looking at. It's nice to get that actual insight. And, and I felt like they were all truthful, you know. Sometimes I felt like, you know, coach kind of there towards the end was more – he knew who the guy was, and he would just say nice things about him. You know, good young man, does everything right. This is like tangible stuff, and and he wasn't he wasn't afraid to say things. You know, no. he was kind of. I'm not. I'm gonna. Fourth right? Yeah. He was kind of savage about Malik Knowles. He's like, yeah, he's talented, but he's That's still got a long ways guard. to go. Yeah, that caught me off guard. Yeah, it's amazing when you set down the same players in front of a different set of eyes, how they see them differently. Yeah. It's it's pretty interesting. It really is. Um, next week we get Scotty Hazelton, and I'm sitting here wondering as we're to our tomorrow? new tomorrow, Tuesday, no. Tuesday. We get assistants. We get assistant coaches, non coordinators. Oh, um, okay. Uh, on Thursday, uh, as we're, we're our new video sets to the left of us, and we're going to have sit down interviews, guys. What's an appropriate number of questions when we have Scotty Hazelton on the new show we're going to be doing that I can ask about his beard? Two, two. Don't go to three. You can you can you can ask one. You can ask three if you mention other famous K State beards, i.e. Jake Waters. Jacob yes. Poland, wasn't it? Jake. I think Jake Waters' beard was better than Jacob Poland's. But okay, yeah, you can ask you can ask take. about well, you can ask rash about. take. Come on, Jacob man. Poland's beard. Jake Jake Waters was that was that's not fair. That's a trash take. They literally had beards for Jake, the students. But Jake Waters He's one of those guys that could go bed, go to bed cleanly shaven and woken up with looking like Abraham Lincoln. I mean, the guy could grow a beard. It was effortless. That's like saying, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Jacob Boland's beard was gross. Oh, man. Well, I know well like what, we said, we give it to you straight, man. For the we, first time in a while, my Twitter mentions yeah, won't be the ones blowing yeah. up this week. It's uh, at Zach Carlson. <laughs> Please follow exist. me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two questions, uh, maybe three, if if right. If you bring up other beards. Okay, and am I, am I allowed to touch the beard? No. No, that's no, crossing no, the line. No, no touching. You can look, but you can't touch. That's a good philosophy, just in general. <laughs> just in general. 
general. That's that's the way I am with uh, dessert buffets too. <laughs> Here we go. Next question from Purple My Purple. <laughs> <laughs> On time. Perfect. Uh, who is your best guess as the number two behind Skyler? I think it's going to be Holcomb. I'm told there's a gap. There's a significant gap. Look, I think Jaron Lewis is talented, and I think They've, there's he, a reason that folks he, he surprised people. And Courtney Messingham brought that up that he yeah. was he was ready for this. He jumped right in in winter conditioning. You know, he came. He didn't just come at the start of the semester. He came during the winter. You know, when after he was done with high school, he that he's been ready. I think he will be. I think he'll be used next year as a backup quarterback if they need him. If there's an injury, I don't think they'll hesitate to use him. Look, there's a reason that they flipped him from North, you know, there's a reason they recruited him to North Dakota State, but it's not like he's a North Dakota State level talent. I mean, he's they wouldn't have gotten him to flip if they didn't think he could play at K right. State. So I think he's going to have a future. I just think he's a true freshman. John Holcomb's been here and obviously it's a new system, so everybody's kind of on the same page there, but Holcomb's farther along in his development physically. I think Jaron Lewis is probably going to have that curve that that every college kid has in terms of adjusting to a different life, a different style of football. So if you were asking me today, I would probably say John Holcomb and and Jaron Lewis is probably the third. Chris Heron is going to be four. Chris Heron, of, it's going to be – unless he's incredible. Right, unless he just shows up and – the the most telling thing that Courtney Messingham said to me, besides the Malik Knowles, that was that was that was very interesting, was he said John Holcomb is a quarterback, and I thought because that answered the question. They move Sammy Wheeler, who's six four and listed at two ten, to tight end. Obviously, he's got to be heavier than two ten, or he'd break in half. Um, I if they need help getting weight on him, I can teach him how to do that. I'm putting weight on is right in my wheelhouse of talents. Uh, so if we need that, you can write that down too. Uh, you can, uh, that's really, Don't that's write my, that one down. The, so the fact that Holcomb is built like a tight end right now, he guys, when you go to practice, you're like, Oh my goodness. He's huge. He's huge. I mean, he's a big dude. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he looks like he could be a tight end. So when Courtney Messingham said he's a quarterback, that tells me they probably thought about it and realized, no, this dude can play. This dude's got something here uh, that that isn't developed yet, but he can play. You, you wait, your phone went to sleep. My phone went to sleep. Uh, Thundercat wants us to rank the position groups uh, for spring football from best to worst. And what um, what are you most looking forward to? this spring let's start at the bottom i think that's got to be running back right Mm -hmm. just because Mm -hmm. of the lack of depth um best i know i just said start at the bottom i'm an idiot um corners yeah corners probably second from the bottom uh linebackers Uh, i'd say interior defensive line still some questions there not really yeah you got trader sean Sean but you got jordan mitty and you've got uh it's on the outside uh, why am I blanking? Joe Davies? Yeah, that's my point. Well, I'm not saying that they have it. <laughs> I'm saying that they have it shirt up. I would, but uh, certainly if you look across the board, quarterbacks, every, people are raving about Skyler. It's got to be higher. Offensive line is probably the top or close. Linebackers top or the close. Defensive ends, damn good. Safety, maybe, is in there, but you got Goolsby back. See, this is the problem. Goolsby back, but he's not back. He's in non-contact because he had a he got his new shoulder. I think they actually killed they killed a walk-on and took his shoulder and put it into <laughs> Denzel Goolsby. It was rough, but he was a walk-on. They'll, they'll make more. Um, but seriously, I mean, if you look at the defense outside of corners, I think defensive tackles would be down there. Linebackers, I think, are really good. You think? Okay. Defensive ends are really good. What Hubert looks like a damn Avenger. I swear to God, looks like Bill Thor. Snyder retired, and Wyatt Hubert was just like, "I'll become a new person now. New coaching staff, new me." It's unbelievable. His hair—he looks like Thor. But even fit like he looks bigger, like physically bigger. I, well, I walked up to him to interview him, and I got confused. I thought it was a mirror, and I thought he's also better at interviews now. Thought it was a mirror. yeah. I thought, thought it was. I thought it was yourself? yes. That's how I view myself: long, flowing hair and ripped. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> so maybe From, one. Oh, we didn't rank them. Uh, offensive line, wide receiver. They really love the wide, wide receiver. Receivers Remember be last run, year right? when they told us our oh, wide receivers are not very good, which is not very good. They're full oh, of crap. <laughs> yes, they were full. <laughs> Andre, you're full of crap on that. They're good at wide receiver. Running backs, rebuilding. Fullback, tight end. That'd be up there. Uh, there, in terms of without, concerns, with, good. yeah, without without Nick Lenners, you know, Courtney Messingham said they were better at fullback and tight end in North I think Dakota State. Nick for the season, they though. will, they will, but they Courtney don't. Messingham is salivating over Nick Lenners, by they, the way, they really are. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of holes to fill still. From Purple My Nurple, <laughs> what can we expect from Ryzen at wide receiver this season? Uh, stardom. Why not? No. I, I'm serious. That's kind of like how I felt about Sebastian Taylor. Like they, he's got the physical frame. But you know, as Courtney Messingham said, he's a guy that's been around the block. He played. He played his freshman year at Michigan State. Now he's redshirted. And uh, you ask you ask defensive backs, you ask defensive players about him. Oh, on the horizon. I mean, they they said he's fast. He cuts well. Uh, he has good hands. Um, Mark D'Antonio would not have recruited him. To Michigan State, if he couldn't play, yeah, I, and he just grew up in you know it's kind of like Tyler Lockett. You grew up with a receiver as your father. You probably have some things that have been said to you throughout your life. So I think I have very high expectations for him. I think Skylar Thompson in this offense, uh, if the running backs can develop and they they identify uh, a two and a three, I. I'm excited to see what they can do in the passing game with these receivers and Skyler in this system. Very excited. Last question of the second half from I Like Pickles Cat. Did any sleepers stand out at practice? I was a sleeper. <laughs> I was not paying attention well enough. Our construction crew is getting loud on the other side. See, it's not a soundproof curtain. It Those were expensive. I just bought a curtain. So. Oh, that's nice. Toby, Toby thinks he's soundproof, but he's not soundproof. I wonder if you can hear us. I think he's listening to a podcast right now. Yeah, he's got his headset in. Okay. Um, obviously, we didn't see it. The, the one thing that stands out amongst everybody, though, is is the Sammy Wheeler move to tight end. Yeah. Um, Glad I missed that. Yeah, good one. Um, but I thought it was pretty telling what Courtney said to him. You know, like, hey, here's the thing. You can stay at quarterback, but you're not going to play. Like, you're going to be four, maybe five. So I think, I think Lewis made that happen. And they saw him play. They're like, okay. And we know we got another freshman coming in. Sammy, you, and, and Wheeler came here as a quarterback, but knowing he might change positions. And I also think, you know, it's a combination of, of t- quarterback talent that they have. And also, I feel like they see talent in him, you know. Well, let's get him on the field in another right. position that we can. So, um, but then obviously Zach and I are not equipped to answer the question. Uh, it, and and it, you've spoken about how much you were. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> look, folks, it, there's no, there was no, First teams, second teams, third teams. There was none of that. The guys were just running drills, firing off the ball. Ooh. They were the linemen were working on cut blocks out in space. Uh, so Connor Riley was rolling a big, you know, exercise ball, right? And then they had to blunt dive at it and block. And nice. he, he always wanted one more step or a uh, different angle. I learned that from him. He didn't like anyone. One more step. I'm like, how? What? So I'm supposed to like? I don't. I didn't understand what he meant by one more step. See, I don't. I'm not coachable. I'm not coachable in any way, as as you guys probably know. I would have gotten up and said, "What do you mean one more step?" I would have run past the ball. Anyhow, that's it. That's it for the second half of the podcast. Sorry, I don't have more insight on football. I saw 30 minutes of drills. We'll be able to dive a little bit deeper into football next time. What we're saying here is when we have more competent individuals along with D. Scott Fritchin at practice, we will have more information. Did you call me competent? Yes. Oh. That was my way of saying I was incompetent. I'm at practice. I'm at practice. That's it for the second half. We'll be back with the overtime. The, the good stuff's out of the way. Now the trash content is... That's all mad. It's, it's right around the corner. It's just pure trash. That's, we're talking right. about potholes. Oh, see? Trash. <laughs> The gang will return with more of the Power Camp Podcast. I'm trying to get a group text in on what everybody wants on the liquor store run, but my phone keeps auto-correcting liquor store to the fridge. A fridge or the fridge? The fridge. 
It just did it again. Well, the fridge is more than just a liquor store. The fridge has over 3,000 wines in stock, the area's largest selection of spirits and craft beers, plus their back-to-back winners of Beverage Dynamics Retailer of the Year. Oh, I get it. Wow. Smartphone. Autocorrect your next liquor store visit to the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, 1150 Westport in Manhattan. Online at FridgeLiquor.com. For more than 20 years, there's only been one reliable source for exclusive and unmatched premium K-State sports news content. It's GoPowerCat.com. The tradition continues as Tim Fitzgerald, D. Scott Fritchin, and the other GoPowerCat sports experts continue their relentless coverage of K-State sports. So make sure you're subscribing to the one and only GoPowerCat. Hey, K-State fans, it's time to come home to GoPowerCat.com. Back to Fitz on the Power Camp Podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Welcome back to the Power Camp Podcast. The two halves are behind us. Now in front of us is the overtime. If you're new to the podcast, this is how the overtime works. You ask us bizarre crap, we answer. There's some serious stuff in here, too. There's some serious stuff in here, too. Thanks for adding that. I mean, there is. <laughs> it's we, not 10 nonsense questions. And and what is not nonsense is the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. You should go to the Claflin and Westport Drives and stop at that corner and <laughs> choose between tacos or alcohol. Or both. Por que nos dos? You can... Did you learn Spanish in California? No, well, I could have. Wow. I've seen a commercial before. <laughs> so uh, get to the fridge. Great people. You come in for the spring showcase. I'm telling you, this is just some life advice from Fitz. If you're coming to the spring showcase, which is not a spring game, it's a showcase of stuff that they haven't fully defined, uh, you're going to want a tailgate, especially if it's a lovely day. And you're going to want to start that tailgate by making purchases at the fridge and then proceed to get drunk like it's a regular season game. But don't drive. That That's bad. Make sure you have one person in your group who's not allowed to be as fun as everyone else and has to drive. Or someone who doesn't drink. You should always be friends with someone who doesn't drink. Your high they school. Even, your they, high school kid. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they can even be like an adult that isn't really that cool. But they don't drink, so you invite them along. Hmm. need to get in and see our friends at the fridge, but also need to lose my postseason weight. So. Huh. That happens, you know. You go to Kansas City, you go to the NCAA tournament, and next thing you know, you've put on five, six pounds. Look, I'm not a doctor. I'm really not. But if you get, like, a cut on your arm, you clean it with alcohol, right? Luckily, my brother has I want to know where this is going. (laughs) So I think it's medicinal. (laughs) I think it'll clean your body of fat. If you... Look at me. Wow, what a leap. (laughs) Drink it? Uh-huh. Yeah, it goes, it goes. I can confirm that this is not accurate. Trust you, me. You drink it and it goes through your fat. It's actually added more. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not a doctor. Just take a picture of high school me and now me, pre you, and post alcohol. You should have taken a picture of me, high school me at 175, and Christmas me, freshman year at 225. <laughs> yeah, alcohol and pizza will make you fat. Uh, speaking of pizza, we're going to eat at the high low. They're not sponsoring this segment, but I thought I'd give them a little more love. But we like them. we got to get going no, here. No, we should also mention. Who? You can sign up for the site, annual, 30% off. Oh, yeah. Folks, if you're not signing up for... <laughs> sell our own product. What? Are we <laughs> what? Uh, if That's you're not signed up on goparacat.com, look, come on. I know we put out a lot of free content. We put out some pretty badass free content. It's part of 24-7's model. But our, our pay content, our VIP content, takes it to a whole nother level. Like I told Jordan earlier, it's the greatest advice we've gotten. If you have to think about it, if it involves commentary, analysis, or insight, or a lot of research, it's going behind the paywall. Uh, If we kind of can, I don't want to say mail it in, but mail it in, you know, it's the free stuff. And unfortunately, people like that. We've got the clicks to prove it. Oh, it's compiled tweets from other people. I will click on this story seven times. It's yeah. it's stuff that's True. out there. It's stuff that people are going to tweet. And so, uh, like a story, like, let's say when Xavier Sneed goes to the NBA draft. Everybody's going to tweet about it. K-State's going to put out a press release. That's not exclusive information. I'm not yeah. going to put that behind a paywall. Exactly. And but, even, even anymore when a recruit makes a commitment, 
The actual commitment story is not behind our paywall. The breakdown of that recruit and the video and some of those things, that's typically behind the paywall. So the analysis is there. 30% off your first year at GoPowerCat. It's new pricing. It, it, it's really not a sale. It's, it's what they're doing now. And here's the key, folks. You can only do it once. So if you try to pull the old sign up, cancel, sign up, that's not going to appear for you anymore. Um, and so go do it. Get 30% off your first year. Um, you even get a seven-day free trial. So you can get in there and say, yeah, yeah, seven days. Boy, do I have remorse about this purchase. Then you can get out of it. Uh, but uh, you won't say that, though. You won't. You'll love it. Uh, the guys are busting their butt in this spring. After spring football, we're going to be rolling out our new video content. Right, Zach? I, I guess. <laughs> if you say so, boss. If you yeah. say so, it's up to you. This is this, this is my full-time employees. Okay. $75.18 is what you're billed. Yeah, yeah. We'll for an annual. That. That's cheaper than anything out there that we've ever done. What would you say it was? $75.18. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's cheaper than any we've done ever, any other network's ever done ever, anything. And make Zach happy. Go, go sign up on YouTube. It's free. It's free. Like us on Facebook, too. Follow us on Twitter. All of it. And our new Instagram account. No, we never really got that going. We don't have an Instagram account. Oh, we have, we have, we have one. It's never been posted to When it. Emily worked here, we were going to really utilize it, and then we didn't. <sighs> she never gave us any pictures. Yeah. Well, so, okay, she gave them to Fitz, and then Fitz never gave. So blame Whatever. Fitz. Blame Fitz. I didn't know we had an Instagram account. We have a Snapchat account. I know too. we have a Snapchat, have a Snapchat account. account. I keep uh, DMing it. My mom took the handle, though. We'll open it up. <laughs> what is our Snapchat handle? The Go Power Cat something. It's not. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not go power cat because my mom has that. How? Do, how? Julie, we need to talk about like t- whenever emails like Hotmail started. She, that's what was like it was go power cat at hotmail dot com. That's her email address because did, Dad worked here and so she just took it. Did she have? Does she have the Gmail address too? Someone has Gmail. Uh, it might be her. I don't know. Well, okay. We're gonna have to. Okay, Julie, come on. She doesn't listen to this. Here we come go. On. Questions from Wabash Station. We're hungry. Let's go. From BK Big Fish 81. Burger King Big Fish. Is That is what that's from? I think so. I think it is, too. But okay. I'm just hungry. Is that what they call their fish sandwich? Yeah, the Big Fish. Yeah. Yeah. Does Manhattan have the most potholes per capita in no. the state? No, 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 no. Well, hold on. You added per state <clears throat> in the state. I don't know. I haven't traveled the state, but I have been to Kansas City, Missouri recently. The answer is they win. It's been a brutal winter. But Manhattan's roads are falling apart, and they're yeah. doing a good job. They're getting out and trying to fill them in. But there's still a giant hole in the driving line on Kimball. Yeah, Kimball's like, a mess. The they current, shut down the, Kimball for like a week there, right when you turn on to on to Tuttle. Kind of like when we come back from mm-hmm. press conferences. The way I come home from the gym every single morning, I go to the gym. Well, it's just on the. That's, I didn't mean it like I that. I go to the it's gym. Just, all right, so how about how about how how I come home I'm from single. everything? I'm on farmers only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flipping up my boss. They're seriously, they shut down a, a, a side of the road so yeah, they can fix bad. all the It's really bad. I've it's, also got one right on my street that I hit every single I am, day. I am told in the parking lot uh, by the Ramblers there, that same area, right, the Blue Hill Shopping Center right Ramblers? there. Ramblers? They, they did. Uh, what's it called they now? Did. What's that called now? The bar? Yeah, what's the bar there? Uh, R.C. McGraw's? R.C. McGraw's now. <laughs> no... It Ramblers, was always Austin awesome McGraw's. Ramblers was never. I'm in sorry. Hills the guys, center. the guy that owned Ramblers owned R.C. McGraw's. Okay. Uh, Where's where was Ramblers? Out on 24. Oh, out on 24. Oh, okay. Yeah, they own. It was the same owner, but now the R.C. McGraw's guy owns R.C. McGraw's. Um, there is a sinkhole. It's not a pothole. It's a sinkhole in that parking lot. They have actually coned it off. Yeah. It's so been like that for a year. I guess what I'm <laughs> saying here is, uh, if you are a noble person and you want to do a little work. Uh, but also you need to hide something like treasure or a body, uh, you can go fix that pothole. You know, there was a shooting in that parking lot a couple weeks ago. Of course there was. Yeah. There was a cop by the pothole this morning, by the way. Just saying. Huh. I wonder if he's hiding evidence. That's all I'm saying. Huh. Maybe. From Contra Cat KS96, is Jordy Nelson an all-time wide receiver at K-State? Oh, uh, yeah. An all-time wide receiver or the all-time wide receiver? I mean, uh, sure, and yes, all-time wide receiver. and the no, yeah, Tyler He's not Lockett. The. I, put what? him above Tyler Lockett. You have to hold the record, man. <laughs> well, he also played for a, too long for a asshead of a coach. 
Uh, there's some pretty damn good receivers. Quincy Morgan. I still love Kevin Lockett, even though he may not That's, have the numbers and everything. I mean, there's so many receivers that were probably I don't know. that accomplished more statistically and winning that he's probably not the greatest. But he's. But if I'm picking a he's team, he's a top five. If I'm picking a team, I want him on it. I yeah. want him as one of my start. If I had to pick a team of starting receivers all time, K State, he and Tyler would definitely be two. Quincy'd probably be the third. He'd be amazing out of the slot. Kevin would be the backup because he's tiny, and plus he's 45 years old now. Be hard for him to play. From who for KSU? What are your thoughts on the mayor, Fred Hoiberg, possibly being at? Nebraska and how much that would drive Iowa State fans like crazy. It's, like it's done. <laughs> like, well, yeah, it's done. This, I'm going to be really blunt here. I'm sorry if I offend anyone. This proves to me the bottom line that coaches are whores. Give them money. They'll go coach. He's coaching at, at a rival of his alma mater. They were they hated each other when they were in the conference together. He knows this cuts deep to people in Ames, and he's doing it because he's going to get paid exceedingly well. I think it's a bad move. He's going to a football school. You don't want to do that, uh, you know. And that's definitively a football school. It's not Kansas State where it's kind of still a basketball school, but you know they've got football success. That is a football school, and. Every resource they have will go to football until they're good in it, except maybe paying a head coach. But also at the same time, he can be very average and never get fired. I'm shocked that Avery Johnson got fired at Alabama. Yeah. Uh, boy, the SEC take a change. Have, have the, has the SEC benefited from the SEC Big 12 Challenge? All of a sudden, the SEC is better than the Big 12, right? It is. I mean, granted, they have more programs, but even then – the Challenge Series, K State has, or K State, the Big 12 still won. It's because the trash SEC teams keep getting in that challenge. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. They should be eliminating those teams. But uh, the SEC all of a sudden has decided, hey, we're going to be a basketball conference. And I think that's good. They've made a couple coaching moves that honestly surprised me because everyone's trying to raise the bar. I mean, Texas A&M is going to go hire a good coach. So we'll see. But yeah, for Fred. Yeah, I'm, I think he's going to do well. I, I think he's going to be at Nebraska. And I think I'll have him in the NCAA tournament. Tim Miles was doing as about as good as they were going to expect. Also from Hoover KSU, do you think Bill Self leaves Kansas for the Bulls? I don't know about the Bulls. I think he is done at Kansas. <sighs> I think he's done. I think he hears the foot beat, footprints, the foot sounds. Foot, foot, foot stomps? Stomps of the FBI, the NCAA, the talent curved down. Uh He's not going to want to coach college basketball if you got to play by the, the rules as written. Not the rules of the road, which everyone, every program that's basically succeeded is played by. The written rules make it a different game. I think he's gone. We'll see. Maybe maybe the right job won't open up in the NBA and stick around and feel like he can do it another year. But I, I, I feel like they've had to temper the way they've done things. I think... The only way he goes to the NBA is if he goes to San Antonio Spurs, and Greg Popovich has to be done in the next three years. If it's not, if not this year, the Spurs I think are going down. I think there's a few other programs he would go to. He's not going to go to the Bulls programs, franchises. The, I, no, Look, I think the Bulls are one of them. It's a he's marquee. He's build though. The Bulls are terrible. Yeah. So what? But you're you hit it on the head. If the FBI is coming, but I'll say this: he's only leaving. If the FBI is coming and he leaves, it's only if it's a massive penalty. I think if they were like, look, one year probation out of the postseason, strip you a couple scholarships. Wait, you mentioned FBI, but now you're talking NCAA. Yeah, that's it. Oh, like, sorry. What, I yeah. misspoke. I misspoke. I'm sorry. If they if they gave him a minor probation, uh, essentially slap on the wrist, I think he'd stay. You know, you get through a year or two, you're fine. But if they like, if they come in hard, they come in swinging. Yeah, then if he goes, you know KU's going in the tank. It's time for the NCAA to get serious about this. If if they don't get serious about it, people are going to keep paying players. And, and look, folks, but KU fans can say, well, we don't pay players. Well, you paid Michael Busey. It goes on everywhere. But it doesn't go on at K-State right now because Bruce Weber's squeaky clean, and I think that makes K-State at an advantage if they're going to enforce the rules. He knows how to compete within the rules. Other people have been playing by the rules of the street, which means Marcus – Smart was worth more money at Oklahoma State than everyone else wanted to pay. That was known. That was known by media people, but it's not something you're sourced well enough to write that 
the coaching fraternity got mad at Travis Ford because, quote, he overpaid for the talent. It's been going on, and it has to stop. If these kids want to be professional players, open it up so they can go get $50,000 to play in the, the D League or whatever league it G is. G League. Now. The G League. Is that because of Gatorade? I actually think so. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I'm now a Body Armor fan. Thank you, Zach, for that. Yo, well, we had Body Armor at the NCAA tournament. I drank five bottles in a day. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love when Coca-Cola goes out and buys like whatever Gatorade's newest competitor is, and then for the next NCAA tournament, they're like, oh, that's what we're going to use as our, our branding. Don't, don't they own <laughs> Powerade also? Well, they did. They yeah, did they still yeah Powerade. Like, it used to be uh, vitamin water for a couple years. Right yeah. after Coke bought them, they are like, oh, let's market that. And then they switched to power. So it was, bo- it was body armor? Yeah. yeah. What flavors? Not, not all of them, except for the ones punch. Zach liked. Not fruit punch, but they had oh, I found the rest a great flavor yesterday. They didn't have that one either. Huh. Okay, here we go. From Contra Cat, excuse me, from I Like Pickles Cat, uh, what season would you rather repeat? 1718 or 1819? 17, uh, let me take that back. Hold on. This season. Hmm. Because. There were times last season where you wanted to hit your head against a wall. Oh. And you were just like, this is the same K-State team year in and year out. It's what you felt like. This year, I felt like, with the exception of Tulsa and Texas A&M, you're like, damn, this team has finally figured it out. This coaching staff's finally figured it out. Let's go. 13 months ago, in February, fans were not happy with K-State basketball. They were teetering on being below 500. People were mad at Bruce. They were, I mean, you can go back and find the tweets. People that now are like, I've always been a fan. Big, Big Daddy, Daddy Bruce. Bruce. I've always Jinx. been a fan. Oh, it's just a joke. It's not a joke. I, you know, it's, come on. You you are literally obnoxious now without Bruce can do no wrong. Um, but you were trashing him, absolutely trashing him. And the only reason he changed is, is one, there's two reasons. One, they got better. They started playing better, and I get that. And two, you think it's better for your persona or, you know, now it's the cool thing to be. If it's cool to be anti-Bruce, you'd do that. If it's cool to be pro-Bruce, you'll do that. If it's cool to be something else, you'll do that. That's not how you should work. You should believe in what you believe and stand by it. But anyhow, uh, you just go back. In February, people were not happy. Almost entirely through the season, they were not happy. And if you remember, you go back and think about it, they were a nine seed, and there was thoughts at the time that if they don't win that first game in Kansas City, they may not make the tournament. Have you forgotten that? So I do take this season. They were comfortably in the tournament field the whole time once they got rolling in the Big 12. Uh, And as fun as that Elite Eight was, it was great for fans and great for – the media that got to go along on the ride. It's fun to cover the NCAA tournament. It sucks if you're covering the tournament and the team you're covering loses in the first round. And it's even really cool when they win two games and you can go to the next site. We could be sitting in Louisville right now. We could be sitting in Louisville right now doing this podcast. And we would have brought Jordan with us. <laughs> or we'd be in a press The conference. greatest shadowing experience ever when Go Paracat took the high school junior uh, to Louisville to cover the NCAA tournament. Hope you get your parent teacher or your parent what is it? permission slip. Yeah, I don't know. Hope he's, you got that signed. He's gonna need a legal release too. <laughs> um, Since you guys took this year, I'll take last year just for the sake of it being. You had a higher ceiling for the next year. It was a it was a slope up. Yeah, and that's kind of a cop out answer if you're just picking one or two. But you had more to look when forward you, to after when you lose in the the elite eight. You know, it was kind of compared to the Royals in fourteen, fifteen. You know, it felt like. You just lost the World Series, but you get everybody back. You know you're, you know you're back again the next year, and this year should have been the year. That's fair. That's fair. Very fair. From infected testicle. Oh my God. Do any of you have time to listen to other sports or uh, non-sports related podcasts? If so, which ones do you enjoy? No, I really don't. I, I mean, don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not a podcast guy. Well, I'll put well, it this way: I could listen to them during the day, but I need to think while I write. Like, I can't listen. I, I listened to a gambling podcast. I'm not a gambler. I listened to a gambling podcast a while back um, because uh, my friend Kelly Stewart, uh, Kelly in Vegas, was on that. And it was really well done. And I learned something. I need Zach, you and I need to go listen to podcasts just simply for the, the uh, formatting yeah. and, and the stuff like that. I learned some really cool things from how they do it. 
Um, and I think it's things we're going to incorporate next year into our podcast. You'll see a little bit different approach to it. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, but they, it was good. The hosts were good. They were entertaining. Uh, and they also cuss like sailors. In fact, sailors are going, man, you cuss a lot. So, they, you know, it's a podcast. We could do that on this podcast, but we want to be a little more family-friendly. Sponsor-friendly. Yeah, yeah, family-friendly. Spon- I don't think the fridge would mind. No. I think we could say this this podcast is sponsored by the Blanken Fridge, and they'd be okay with they'd that. They'd probably be like, ooh, the Blanken Fridge Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, no, I don't. Um, I'm, I've in the past been a political person, but I, I've kind of disengaged. This is so ugly out there. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, you kind of did. No, really, compared to what I was. Compared to what you were, fair. Um, fair. But... Uh, I do. I do listen to some things. You know, if something pops up in my YouTube recommended, if it's like a clip from like Joe Rogan or something that's like, you know, 10 minutes or less, I might watch it. I want to go listen to Adam Carolla a little bit um, because he's kind of regarded as someone else who's done a lot with the format. This format's blown up. I think I think we we are on the front wave of this for 24-7 and CBS. There's some big stuff coming. And a lot of YouTubers kind of, you know, younger younger types, they've kind of started their own podcast recently like logan paul he built a you know a beautiful studio in his garage and he'll have you know three or four podcasts a week i wouldn't say they're great but um and we will a lot of people are going this this way we will be doing more podcasts we will have this one big podcast with your questions from our station that is not changing uh but we are going to with our new setup be better able to easily bring in guests uh off-site guests, um, and then we're going to incorporate some of the concepts from the pregame podcast into other elements during the week because I've learned this lesson. Nobody listens to podcasts on Friday. They just don't. They, they, all their goal is to get their work done and get out of the office on Friday. Um, or they're traveling to the game, and, and uh, it's just it's not a good – it's not a good – traffic day on the side either no. it's it kind of runs contrary to what we believe so uh in the past when we didn't have some of these tools that we have now so that will be reflected in how we cover football in, in the fall we really have some good tools now from contra cat ks96 what number one seed falls first gonzaga i think uh, virginia who, who's virginia I mean, I yeah just, bring it up i was just about to pull it up if you hadn't you know so quickly. Virginia's got Auburn, there. don't they? No, no, no. Oregon, that's wrong. Oregon. wrong. Virginia has Oregon. No, they're not going to lose to Oregon. Uh, look, Oregon's a fine team, but they... Oh, I didn't say that. The, the, Virginia can still lose first and play right. the first Final Four Yeah, game. Duke, Virginia Tech, and Duke's going to win that game. They yeah. didn't have Zion the that's first time they played match. Virginia Tech. You got Gonzaga uh, playing Florida State. No. And it's a fine Florida State team, but it's nothing no. special. Leonard Hamilton sucks. You got... <laughs> Virginia and Oregon. No. Nope. Just said it. it. This is the one I think. Carolina, it, Auburn. If Auburn goes and plays, they, they can win this game. Those are two damn good teams that both deserve to be in the Elite Eight, if not the Final Four. Auburn, folks, what you're missing here is Auburn is Iowa State on steroids. They've got a they've got a bigger upside, but they also had their crash and burn moments this year where they looked totally incompetent. That's why they were a five seed. That's why they were what a four seed in the SEC tournament. So they they I was stayed on steroids. It's so funny. It's it's a truth. They they run and gun and get up and down and they play offense. They play better defense, but it's a real helter skelter brand of basketball. And when it works, it's really fun to watch. It's a perfect brand to play at Auburn. It really is. It's it's a perfect brand to play at any football school. It'll catch attention of the, the viewers, sell tickets, and you'll have enough success to make you wildly popular. But I don't think you can sustain a program doing that over the long haul. I'll say I'm going to pick Auburn. Number one, Carolina would probably have the toughest test. Right. I would say Gonzaga number two Just because I don't I, trust Gonzaga. I, agree. I don't. I don't think they're that great ever. Well, what are some potential Elite Eight matchups? With, oh, say they oh, all win. Teams. They can all win. Um, if they win out, Gonzaga would play Tech or Michigan, and I think both of those teams would beat Gonzaga. I agree. I think that's Carolina would play Houston or Kentucky, which awesome. If they played Houston, Carolina would win. If they played Kentucky, I think Kentucky would win. Virginia would play Purdue, Tennessee, which are two very inconsistent teams. Um, 
So I like Virginia to get to the Final Four if they get past Oregon. And then Duke's got LSU or Michigan State. So let's just go Duke, ahead and I think Duke Duke's in. had their their moment. Look, th- they got past UCF. They're going to be fine. I. That's one of those games when you look back and you think, in the long run, after Duke wins a national title, you're going to forget that UCF game when, honestly, they got lucky at the end. How that ball rolled out, I have no idea. It's almost like... I'm telling you, it's payback for Grayson Allen's shot rimming out against KU last year. It's karma. Know. So, uh, I, I think Duke's going to win it now. I think that they've got their attention is clearly locked in now. There we go. From Solly43, will Bruce beef up the non-conference schedule in the future? Oh, I think it's going to go down next year. Yeah, it has to go down next yeah, year. Yeah, I think I uh, – no. Let's, let's just clarify something right now. The schedule's not set today. No. Like, yes, they schedule a few teams a few years out. This schedule is not set. They could schedule as many teams as they want to today. And, and really, the the where he's going to take it down is he's not going to have a Lehigh. He's going to have – a bottom team from the Patriot. He's not going to have Georgia State. He's going to have a bottom team from that league. You know, he's he's going to be careful about those games, not losing those games at home. I would like to see him just just step, just go play like a mid to lower level Power Five team. That's all I want. Yeah, Georgia. Like, like yeah, I, not Georgia because I'm sick of playing Georgia. Okay. But a team like SEC. Georgia. You yeah. Go play the ACC. I'm glad they're going to be playing the Big Let's go East play next Clemson. year. Yeah, exactly. Go get Mason Schoen back in. Do you know he's a grad mm-hmm. assistant? There? I did know that. Way to drop some knowledge. Thanks, knowledge. Twitter. The more you know. Is that it? Was that the last question? No. Well, we'll keep going. Well, here, I mean, right? I didn't know if you guys were going to keep talking. No, gotta, they gotta, just turned okay. into a rant. From Adam K63, I know it was a oh, tough exit jackass. from the uh, for the women's team, but do you feel that this team will be pretty exciting to watch over the next few years? Should be. They got thumped. Yeah, that was rough. That's that's an easier way to lose than what happened to case State men. Yeah. Close you'd game, ex- you should have won. You'd accepted the outcome by about the start yeah, of the third quarter. Was, oh, they're a lot better than us. But, I mean, it should continue. They should. There's no reason for the same team as the men. There's no reason for them to drop off because they have solid players in the program. They've had pretty good recruiting. I mean, if it drops off, especially next year, that's not good. They're really only losing one player and losing two. But So, I mean, I would say that there's hope for the future, but I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see into it, and, and we'll kind of see how it plays out. you got to get people to step up. you got to get – Chrissy Carr to step up. I would like to point out that if he had a crystal ball, we would have a podcast with him and his crystal ball, but he does not. Mm. Which Bummer. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I have an online crystal ball where I can make predictions on recruits. That's but you're not perfect anymore. I'm perfect for the 2020 cycle. Ooh. Because I've made zero predictions. <laughs> Atta boy. You're also 0% then. Last question of the podcast from I Like Pickles Cat. I love here we come. National Treasure Stephen A. Smith had a bird fly through his through the window of his office. What is your wildest uh, wildest experience with a wild animal? A oh, damn turkey vulture threw it through the window at ESPN. That is crazy. Why? Why would the bird I don't know? I don't know. I don't know. It reminded me of a scene. My from- friend. <laughs> What? The Vulture. Oh. <laughs> There's a show, Homecoming, where they had something on Netflix. No, it was on Amazon. That Something like that happened. Maybe that bird's been watching too much streaming TV. True story. This is a great story. This is a great way to end the podcast about the day my wife almost died and how I handled it. I, don't, I, well, I was reminded of this the other day when I saw someone on Twitter tweeted a security camera video of uh, look like teenagers or college-age kids skinny dipping in the parents' pool. And it was in Florida, and a small gator crawled in the pool, like came across the deck and got hopped in the pool with them. And it's, it's a boy and a girl. And the boy was out of the pool within two seconds, leaving the girl alone. And and the gator's like snapping at her, and finally was it a gator? Or was it a deer? No, it was a gator. It I was thought a gator. there was a video where it was a deer. Two very different things. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can tell the difference between the gator. And oh, the I'm gator. sure you can. So, uh, in the first days of PowerCat Illustrated, go PowerCat.com. We went to uh, Texas A&M to cover a football game. Always a bizarre experience because it's a freaking cult. Uh, on this trip, uh, we were in the outskirts of. Uh, 
of College Station in the suburbs at a hotel, uh, which means you're in the boondocks. And as we were driving to our hotel, uh, we had to slow down because there was a man streaking down the middle of the frontage road. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's not like he's streaking through town. He's running on a frontage road out off of an interstate highway, and there's no one around. So we had that going for us right there. That was a Friday night after uh, my wife went to Yale practice, I think, with Robert, and they got soaking wet from the rain. Anyhow, we're coming back. It, it, this was a whole bizarre trip, including some incredible dancing at uh, the Dixie Chicken by D. Scott. Um, it was just, this whole trip was whacked. We get back and we get off in case you guys got those stupid circular, you know, right, right. And uh, we were walking out the doors and we realize all of a sudden everybody's freaking out and there's police everywhere. Well, a young buck deer had gotten loose and gotten up into the parking area, like, like in the circle drive area. Uh, and it was coming at us and those windows are all mirrored. So it was seeing what's behind him and seeing himself. So he thinks there's another buck. And so, uh, I handled it like a man. I hid, uh, behind my luggage around a corner. Little do I realize in my self-preservation moment that my wife is like worried about the deer because it's bleeding because it has run into the windows a number of times. And this deer with very pointy antlers, they're not full antlers, they're just like spikes, comes right at my wife. And at the last second, Becky kind of freezes uh, and I'm hiding. Um, it, the last second, it kind of veers off and hits the window right next to her, and she gets deer blood all over. I mean, literally, she could have been really hurt. And the police come running by and say, ma'am, you okay? And she goes, yeah, it's not my blood. And about one minute later, you hear the gunfire as they finally got it away <laughs> from people and shot it. So that was the day that I hid behind my luggage while my wife almost died. That's my best wildlife encounter. I mean, my best one is we were in the Boundary Waters um, for scouts, and we had two crews, and this— uh, campsite or whatever. It had two campsites and we met up with each other. One of us did north to south, the other one did south to north. So we met up and one of our guys, he was going to the bathroom and on his way there, a pot falls out of a tree that a squirrel had stolen from some previous campers and dropped it on his head and just hit him on, hit him in the head. Awesome. I think that was on so, purpose. So we had this pot for like camp outs for, for, you know, beyond that, the lucky pot. From the Boundary Waters. I got nothing to top yeah, that. <laughs> got nothing. You didn't have any, like... Yeah, I mean, you live in Beloit, which is... I like, mean, I had about every animal known to man in my backyard growing up. <laughs> Pheasants, deer, turkey, everything. Bears? Not bears. That's not the man. Giraffe. 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 All right. Camels. All right. Okay. Elephants. All right. That'd been cool. Beloit would be a lot cooler if it had giraffes, elephants, and camels. Two elephants, actually. That'd be awesome. One That's time it. I was at Disney World and I, sh- I stopped the poachers from. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That, those were wild animals. And one time at Bain Camp. <laughs> no. No. Well, we got the flute out. Okay. That's it for the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Man, this was long. I admire you for sticking around. And what's wrong with you? Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing.